I want you to put your hands together for the one, the only Bishop Carlton Pearson. As we're trying to go back and bridge the past with the present to project us into the future, the old holiness movement of God, the Pentecostal expression on the classical Pentecostalism in America, over 400 million classical Pentecostals on the planet today, started in a little sort of converted livery stable. It used to be an AME church, African Methodist Episcopal. It was dormant, and the building was just laying there, and they went down there. And Brother Seymour and founded. They started praying and seeking God. There was a good old-fashioned move of the Holy Spirit. How many of you know we need a good old-fashioned move of the Holy Ghost? I've often said every time God gets ready to bring revival to the quote-unquote black church, somehow we miscarry to a civil rights movement. How many of you know we don't need another civil rights movement? We need a good old-fashioned outpouring of the Holy Ghost. That's what will change lives. So I want you to clutch with all of your faith the good old-fashioned feeling you used to have. I still have it today, don't you? And I want you to think back to some of those precious times. And Come on, Brother Donnie McClurkin, and just lead us in this if that's what's on your heart or whatever the Lord gives you. Take us back a little bit because whenever Donnie sings, he always takes us back. You know? And We're going to all help you in any way we want. Give Donnie McClurkin a great big God bless you as he ministers. Come on, Donnie. Oh my. I'm, I, there, there are songs. <laughs> this is the wrong thing to give me. Yes, this is the wrong thing to give me. Because when you're talking about old songs, my mind just runs back way further past where I'm, I was born, you know. Because those are the songs that nursed me. Those are the songs that weaned me. Those are the songs that gave me strength. Those are the songs that encouraged my faith. See, back in the day, they used to sing the gospel. They sung songs that said, Live and he loved me. That's the life. Die and he saved me. That's the death. Buried, he carried more. Sins far away. But he didn't stop there rising. He justified. Yeah. Oh, y'all don't know this. Glorious day. Well, living he loved me. Dying he saved me. Dying he came my sins far away. But then riding he jumped up. Free me forever. One day he's coming back. Glorious day. Everybody say.
Look at somebody and say, that's gonna be a glorious day. Gonna be a glorious day. Yeah. Glorious day. What time is yeah. Just a minute, I got a feeling that everything's gonna be all right. Yeah, oh. my oh. 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 Yeah. Oh, how many times have I spent hours just groaning and praying like that? The scripture says we know not what to pray for as we ought. But the Holy Ghost makes intercession for us and prays with, with groanings that cannot be uttered. For he that searches the heart knows the mind of the Spirit and prays for the saints according to the will of God. The word will, this thelema, according to the determinations, the termination or determinations of God. There's a determinate factor that's occurring right now on the earth. God is fully in control and it looks pitiful and painful and pathological almost. But we're going to come through this with flying colors into a whole nother level of personal, powerful, spiritual dimensions. I know it. So just be at peace. In fact, nobody can sing peace be still like Vanessa Bell Armstrong. She and her uh, family attended our church here in Tulsa for years. She was a favorite. She actually traveled on the road with me and did some revivals. I was introduced to her by Bishop Harold Ray. He put a cassette of her in his car for me in Dallas, and we had to pull the car over to the side of the road when she was singing, he looked beyond my faults to see my needs. Vanessa is Vanessa. She can come up with tones and, and sounds. The Holy Ghost is surprised at. <laughs> she will bless you tonight, and I want you to feel the essence and the power of this song. Be at peace. That means know that there's ultimate resolve. That's what hope is. Happy anticipation of an ultimate good resolve. Vanessa Bell, Azusa, peace be still. Master. You got a storm going on right now, but the tempest is raging. And I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna go to The pillow I talk see
story, the weather, the wrath, and then the storm, tossing, tossing. But you know what? I like Jesus because he'll just really take away as he said, Oh, demon, you call you and see. He said, Oh, man. And then he said, Wait a minute, hold on. Oh, what? Oh, what? All the sweet saints that have been called home, even if they were young, um, children, babies, teenagers, many of us are grieving and mourning over the loss of some saintly person. All the bishops that have been lost in the Church of God in Christ, as I've been referring to, but not just the Church of God in Christ, just 80,000 people have died to the coronavirus. And I like to believe, and I think most of us do who are believers, that love call them home, that to be absent from the body, especially when that body is ravaged with sickness and disease and bloated and full of pain and agony, is to be present with the Lord. Some people don't even believe that, but those of us who do, we get a certain sense of hope and reaffirmation. We need some hope. We need to believe that something happens after this life, however tragically the death occurs however seemingly prematurely the death occurs. The fact that there's something after this life. I believe we go back to our future. We go back to where we came from. Before I formed you in the room, I knew you and called you. That wasn't just for Jeremiah. I think that's for every human being on the planet, whether they respond to the call or not. We all come here with permission, a mission, commission. And now we're gonna sing, hear from commission. Fred Hammond uh, is one of the most remarkable, has one of the most remarkable voices. I remember I was on a cruise with him uh, with, where he was singing with Wayman Tisdell. That was Wayman's last cruise before he transitioned. He and his wife, Regina, and my wife, Gina, and I were their special guests. We roomed right next to them. He and I, Wayman and I, sat and watched President Obama inaugurated in Wayman's suite. And we cried sitting on the waters of, of the Caribbean, remembering that many Africans came from uh, West Africa to the Caribbean waters in boats, the descendants of slaves who may have sat in those same waters 400 years ago, not knowing where they were. And there we were watching and crying, both of us together, uh, President Obama being inaugurated. Fred was on that cruise and he sang with Shaka Khan. And when she got through singing with him, she screamed in the mic, oh my God, a life's dream to sing with Fred Hammond. That touched me deeply knowing some of Fred's roots and my roots and our little classical Pentecostal backgrounds. And now Fred Hammond is one of the most respected and admired voices on the earth for singing, both secular and sacred. He's leading this song, Love Calls Us Home. You'll see that Marvin Sapp, now Bishop Marvin Sapp, is singing with the commission. I met them at Wayman Tisdale's church, his dad's church, here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, however many years ago. And um, this is powerful. It's, it just has that special, unique Fred Hammond and commission sound. It's gonna bless you. Love Calls Us Home. Yeah. 
standing on the edge with your prodigal heart wanting for someone to save you from yourself out here on the ledge dangling somewhere in the dark doubting if anybody really cares when love reaches through the shadows whispering your name nothing will ever be the same again cause when love There's a lot of history in what we do, his story and her story. Uh, we say history, that's generally a reference to Jesus, but the English word is. But uh, there's her story. Mahalia Jackson um, has a story. Her voice carried particularly the African American, but not exclusively the African American community through a very difficult time in its history, our history as Americans, as, as um, descendants of Africans. And her, her voice, her sound, my grandmother used to listen to Mahalia Jackson music when I was five and six years old, I remember hearing that. I 
I met Joshua Nelson when I was preaching for Timothy Fleming in, in Atlanta. Joshua sang that night and he did his, what he's gonna do, what you're gonna hear him do in a minute, and he did Azusa, a Mahalia rendition. I was in tears. I mean, it moved and touched me so deeply. Everybody loves Mahalia. I've loved her all my life. But here's Joshua Nelson, who has some Jewish background. He gets up and sings this song, and I grabbed him after the, after the service, and I said, dude, I'm gonna record you. You've gotta come to Azusa. He didn't think I was serious, and I brought him in to sing. I believe that in this synchronicity of time and target, especially when you're tuned in with God, everything happens, all things ultimately work together for good. So Joshua Nelson is gonna sing live. If you wanna close your eyes, you probably won't because you're watching a video, but if you just close your eyes, you would actually think Mahalia Jackson is actually in the room, in the house, singing. It's like he channels her. It's, it's amazing. And it's gonna really, really bless you and bring precious memories to you of probably your grandparents or even great grandparents. Joshua Nelson, Azusa, Mahalia Jackson.
Virginia, not long ago, in the Virginia Beach area, Pastor Al Jones dedicating his church, and they had a young man there, a pastor named Ronzel Pretlow, that sang under such an anointing that night. I, I was a little mesmerized by his voice, and I said, "You've got to come to Azusa." That was just two weeks ago, and we got him on a plane. He got down here. He's written a song that I want absolutely you to hear on this um, CD. His father has pastored for many years and fell, fell ill. The man is 23 years old, has taken his dad's ministry, and is just growing by leaps and bounds. And I thought he's worth investing in because he has an anointing on his life. God has blessed him and God has used him. And I want him to come right now and sing this song for you that he wrote. And uh, the musician's gonna get with him and you're gonna get blessed. He's got a voice as smooth as milk, but he's got anointing that will make demons tremble. Come on and give him a great big God. Bless you, Pastor Ronzel Pretlow, a man of God. Praise the Lord, everybody. Bless the Lord. I honor the Lord for being here for his presence and to all of these dignitaries that we have, to Bishop Pearson, to Dr. Cirillo, First Lady Pearson, to Pastor Hawkins, Sister Pace. God is certainly wonderful, isn't he? Amen. How many grateful folk do we have here in the room? I'm just grateful. I'm just grateful to be here in the presence of the Lord. It was only a year ago that the Lord instructed me to take a job at a fast food restaurant. And I was embarrassed because I was doing all of this preaching and all of this singing. And then people would come in and see me flip eggs. But during the course of that year, once a week, the Lord would call me out of the job into the bathroom. And he would tell me, worship me for 10 minutes. And for one solid year, the Lord said only one word to me, and that word was greater. Y'all not hear what I'm saying. And tonight, God brings me into greater. So you're looking at somebody that's just grateful to be here. That's just glad that the Lord is on my side. How many know that the anointing of God overflows? Look at somebody and say, the anointing of God overflows. 
he gave me this song back at home. We have little church mothers, and they sit down, and when they feel the spirit, it's like it moves all over the whole church. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That spirit begins to shift, and before you know it, your hands go up, and your, your feet start moving, and before you know it, the anointing of God is all over the room because it overflows. And God gave me this song. I want to share it with you tonight. Clap your hands and say, it overflows. There was a woman in the service that was speaking in other tongues, praying in the spirit, Lord. While that she was praying, the Spirit touched my soul. I said, I, I know that feeling. It comes let the spirit have his way you feel better tomorrow than you feel feel today the spirit have, have his way and the you feel better tomorrow than you feel Your chains will be broken. Oh, Lord, that's how it goes. I know that feeling. But I know what I'm talking about. I know that feeling. They try to put your hands down, but your feet start moving. I know that feeling. You try to hold your feet, but your hands go up. I know that feeling. It all flows. Then they say this, overflow. Overflow. pastor of my church and the musician so y'all got to be my church tonight and do like I do it at my church. Overflow. Overflow.
It's overflowing. Them old sisters used to get happy when it was not overflowing. They start going like this. Come on, roll them hands and overflow a little bit there. That's what Big Mama used to do. Hey, it overflows. It overflows. Ah. All right, sit down. What's the matter with you? Look at someone say, I'm so overflowing, I might run all over this auditorium tonight. Ah, some folks go to church, other folks have church. We having some service in here tonight, and the glory of God is overflowing, and you gonna take it home with you. Interestingly, I had my first crush on Shirley Caesar. <laughs> I was a kid, probably. I started listening to her when I was like seven, eight, nine. A couple of years before my grandmother transitioned, at 53 years old, I was 10, I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost around eight, and I think that prepared me as a little boy uh, for the, to me, way early. My grandmother was like, a, a, I've said often, a goddess to me. I almost worshiped her from her cooking and the way she cleaned the house, the way she fixed her hair, the way she would sew her clothes and wear the pretty hats and things to church. So I was um, being prepared for her when I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I believe. Shirley Caesar, Mahalia Jackson, Bishop Mason, that album of him praying, of course, the caravans, and Jesse May Renfro Sapp, who was from here in Oklahoma City, who sang, I wanna be there, good Lord, I wanna be there. And I recorded her, one of her other songs. People impacted me as a child. I think your, your guardian angels are the voices and choices you make as a child that stay with you the rest of your life. Albertina Walker, who founded the caravans, in, is what it was, my friends. Inez, all those women that sang, I got to meet them. In fact, my first appearance at Christ Universal Temple, the first Sunday officially as an interim senior minister, Albertina came. Uh, Inez was there, and, um, and then Inez's son plays for Aretha, and when I traveled with Aretha, I got to see him at the organ. There's a lot of connections here, and they're very, very powerful. But caravans are what black people had to do in the 30s and 40s traveling in the South because if they were caught along very often, they would be lynched or beaten or, uh, or somehow um, terrorized. They traveled together in caravans and they would stay in, in members, church members' homes because they couldn't stay in hotels. They'd eat home-cooked meals. Dr. King had to do the same kind of thing. We've come a long way in this country, but when I think of the caravan, of us all collecting ourselves together, we need one today. We need to pull together like a caravan for sure and let's travel this road through not just this pandemic, but the whole shift and change and charge that's occurring in the earth, occurring in the church, occurring in our country. We'll go sweeping through the city and situation together. That's where we are. Shirley is past 80 now, Pastor Shirley Caesar, but she's been around the world. She's known as the queen of gospel music, church music, Reverend, uh, Shirley Caesar, and I've loved her for years. I never dreamed as a little kid that I'd actually meet her in person, and that this particular song, and we'll go sweeping through the city, that we'd record it, I'd have it on this album. I didn't even know I'd do these albums. It's amazing how history finds its place and space in your life when you're alerted and aware that you came here with mission uh, and permission to exist. She comes to the Azusa conference and she sings this song. I remember the first time uh, she sang at Azusa and she sang at the very first Azusa. Oral came the night she sang because he loves her so much, loves her music. And uh, she danced before she even sang. He was elated over the very first uh, thing she did in her authenticity. And so I have such love for this sound, this singer, this woman of God, and that she was able to sing in uh, one of our last Azusas here in town. Uh, the same night that Pretlow sang, she sang, and uh, it was just glorious. You'll love this song. You'll feel it, and let's go sweeping through that city, and we won't be back once we get there. So even if you've lost loved ones, they're sweeping through that city, and you'll go to them before they come back to you, except in the memory. Shirley Caesar, the queen herself, the reverend, the pastor, my dear friend, I know it'll bless you. Somebody said, praise the Lord. Come on again and say, praise the Lord. 
Glory to God. You know, you may take your seats. You know, I'm blessed of the Lord tonight to be here. And I'm so glad that I know not only who I am, but I know who I belong to. Glory to God. Lean on somebody and tell them, I know he lives. Glory to God. What are you trying to say, Pastor? I just want you to know he's alive. And because he's alive, we are alive. Because he's alive, we can inhale and we can exhale. And you know, the day is going to come when we're going to pull off and put on, step out and step into. And I tell you, I feel this thing already because I'm looking forward to this brand new Jerusalem where we'll never have to cry no more and we'll never have to die no more. There'll be no more black wreaths and no more cemeteries and no more hospitals and no more doctors. We won't have to worry. What are you saying? One of these days, I'm going to reach over and get somebody by the hand and we're going to sweep.
Can I get some back? That's on your way to this brand new Jerusalem. You don't care who knows it. I want the world to know I am saved. Somebody quick. If you're on your way to heaven, <laughs> step out my. and shake this black hand. My and say, Pastor Shirley, I'm on my way to heaven. Hey. Hold on hey. Somebody say, I might as well shout because God has already given me the city. Shout! Shout! I got the city! Hey, hey, hey. Glory! 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 Yes. Hey! 
Clap your hands, clap your hands. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout to the Lord of the Lords of Triumph, yeah. Look at someone and say, this ain't the Holy Ghost, I don't know. It just suits me. This is the Holy Ghost. This is the Holy Ghost. This is Azusa. This is good old fashioned Holy Ghost hot pouring. Somebody give God a shout in this place tonight. Thanks to those of you who've been giving. Uh, the giving is increasing. We're meeting a felt need with these hour long specials. It's an emotional, psychological, theological, spiritual need that's being met. The letters and the cards and the calls and the texts and the comments, there are thousands of people who are being blessed. We're getting responses from South Africa, from the Caribbean, from Europe, all the way as far away as Australia. They're watching these videos and they're ministering to people who are not even familiar with this type of, of a style but it's blessing them. So your support helps us. We're th we've got three cameras in here. I've got a producer, we have director. Uh, we have creative people surrounding us, the musician. All of this is part of a presentation that we believe was sent of God, anointed and appointed for this particular time in American and world history. So thank you for your giving, whether that's $10. If everybody just gave $10 or 20, that would be immensely helpful to how we extend and expand. We, we have to editize and digitize, edit, I should say, and digitize all this video that costs quite, quite a lot for the sermons and the songs. So you're helping us meet a felt need in the culture. God will honor it. There's no seed or gift too small. And of course, there's none too large. Thank you for what you do. God bless you and God return it to you. Interesting caveat about Fred Hammond. I met him in a studio in Detroit for the first time I met him. He was producing a song for Margaret Bell with whom I was doing a duet at her request, but I did it with the, with the stipulation that she would record a song that Carmen wrote titled Fear Not My Child with me, which we did. We sang that song together. But before I got to meet um, Fred up close, they were trying to introduce the song that Margaret wanted me to record with her. That's Vanessa Bell's baby sister. I had never heard the song and I couldn't get the melodic line. So Hammond, Fred said, just said, here's what it sounds like. She said, Fred, sing it to him. Fred, I mean, sing it for him. Fred sang it for me. And I just stood there with my mouth gaped open saying, I'm leaving town. What did y'all even bring me in for? Who is that? And I said, dude, who are you? I don't know who you are, but you're going big places. Your voice and your sound is so unique. I actually did not want to record the song. They never did it with me and her, because Fred just, if, if Fred is singing, you need to go somewhere and sit down. He <laughs> sang uh, so powerfully, and I remember saying, I don't know who you are. I had never heard of the commission. He said, I used to play, we used to back the wine-ins. I, I didn't know that part of it. But I've watched this evolution over the years. Now we're all in our 50s and 60s and 70s. And uh, we've seen history occur. So his story, her story, all of this is combining precious memories, reminding the saints of the hope. This will pass. Where we are in this country and culture will pass. And we'll look back on it. And we'll remember that God was there. And that we were there. And that where two or three are gathered together, God is in the midst of us. The scripture says God has not give us a, given us a spirit of fear. Fear is a spirit. It's an energy. It's a deadly negative energy. The word he actually used there in the Greek would have been the word for cowardice or timidity. In other words, God has not given us a spirit that allows us to be intimidated, in, t intimidated. We will not be intimidated by anything that's happening. We will supernaturally empty our hearts of fear and fill it up with a God kind of faith. So this song is quite appropriate, though Carmen wrote it probably 30 years ago, and we recorded it then. It's titled, Fear Not My Child, I'm With You Always. In fact, that particular Sunday, Dana Plato was in the audience. She was here in Tulsa uh, at Laureate. 
experiencing suicidal tendencies, which she ultimately committed suicide, but they brought her to our church that Sunday morning, and I knew she was in the audience and prayed with her afterward. She was in a very, very deep, deep place and space of, of darkness at that time. The song ministered to her. She was in tears. I remember holding her in my arm and loving on her and praying with her after service, and she was crying the whole time. She couldn't even talk. But this song I know ministered to her, and whenever she left this planet, love was calling her too. God doesn't call everybody home, but God welcomes everybody there. And I believe she's with God. Fear not, my child. I'm with you always. In myself, I have failed the Lord. Then was afraid to try once more the fire in my soul. Had fled, but that's when Jesus came and said, My spirit gives us strength you need to build you up and help you succeed. And for the vision in the night. give these words of life. Fear not, my child. Discouragement is all that you will usually find. Don't even watch the waves that roll your sea, no. Oh, but just keep your eyes focused on me. Thank you, Lord. He said that I will make you strong and then, yes, I will. Your broken courage, I, I will mend. And if you fall and should get hurt, just remember these eternal words. Oh, 
once a year today. God is present. There is, as I say, and I get that from all Roberts, no distance in prayer. So I pray for you today or tonight or whenever you're listening, wherever, whatever your particular state of mind is, however much anxiety or tension or stress or duress is there, God has not given us a spirit of fear or weakness or timidity. You, you were born capable of sustaining whatever you're sustaining, of enduring whatever you're enduring. The mental agony, the sleeplessness, the worry, in Jesus' name, and I love to say in the name of Yeshua, Jesus, the deliverance and the power, that's how most of us are related to in prayer. There are all kinds of ways to pray, but when we say in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, there were a lot of Jesuses in Israel, a lot of Joshua's, that's a Hebrew name. But the one in Nazareth was known for creating miracles and changes and transmission, transformation in life. And so I reach out to you by faith, yours and mine combined, for you to feel peace in your home, in your heart, and in your head, the way you think. That there is a peace-filled, powerful penetration of your life of your essence, the renewing and redoing, the literal renovation of your mind, because what you think about, you bring about. There's a renewal occurring right now. I decree it. I declare it in the name and nature of the Christ. Behold, be healed, be happy, be safe. And so it is. Peace and blessing. Namaste. In these uncertain times, Go back to the foundation. Go back to what you know. Go back to Azusa. Join us every Friday night for music, ministry, and memories. As Bishop Carlton Pearson reminds the saints of the hope. That includes everybody. Loved by God, redeemed by Christ. All the power, all the anointing is here just as you remember it, and better than you've ever seen it before. Digitally remastered for the highest quality video and sound. Join the artists who became legends, and the legends who became immortal. Azusa Revisited, Friday nights at 8.30 p.m. on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. Don't you dare miss it. The spirit of Azusa is hitting America.